Hello everybody and welcome to my Magic Sorcerer build. Now you may have seen the version of this that I made on the PTS. This has now since been finalised, hence the name Storm Finalised. Pretty obvious, right? This is the final version of my Magic Sorcerer build for the upcoming patch for those on the console and for the patch that just hit Somerset on the PC. So this once again is going to be using my Jeweled and Ice Staff setup, pretty similar skill bar, etc. But there are a few changes that have come with Somerset to update this build and amp it up. Mostly it's going to be our skills on the overload structure and it's going to be our CP itself. That's where you're going to see the big changes. Quite a bit in the CP especially. Now, disclaimer. I don't really want to go into detail on how to use this combo because I've explained it very many times now and I think a lot of my regular viewers probably get bored of it. I'll do one very, very brief rundown of how to do that. But if you want to see the video combo explained, check out my previous Sork videos. I can't explain that enough, all right? Check out the previous Sork videos. If you do not do that, that is your own choice. So, yeah. Don't ask, how do I do it? Watch the previous videos. It's all in there. And if you want to see this build in action, I will release a 1BX video with this in the future. There's also a fair bit of footage of this already on my channel in the montages and playlist section. Because, again, that's a question I get quite a lot. So, on to our stuff of Stuffington. Whatever a stuff of Stuffington is. Now, while I'm here, I do need to get an ulti up. So, I'm going to pour over here while I make this video. Um... Anything I should mention real fast. Yeah. So firstly, our gear. Our gear is going to be as follows. Two Shadow Rend. Everything is in pen, by the way. And we are only running one Triglyph. Any of your big pieces will do. I'll run it on the helm, but it could be helm, body, legs. Doesn't matter. You do need that last little bit of stamp. It will make a difference. And we are in all light. We are in seven light. That is very key. It sounds silly because a lot of you will be like, Oh, but Blobsy, I'm missing some magicka. Why are you not going for 511? Well, the simple answer is because we're gaining a lot of sustain and pet stock is expensive. A lot of the time you're going to have to resummon your pets when playing this at a high level. You're going to have to get used to your shields. That's expensive. Movement is expensive. The list goes on. It's expensive to cast. You need to lower that cost. I think the 7 light is really, really worthwhile on a pet stock. I do prefer this significantly, not just a little bit. Our second set with that Shadow End. Shadow End, by the way, I should probably explain because I'll probably get asked what it is. It gives you Magic Recovery, one piece. Two pieces is when you take damage, a 15% chance to summon a Clam Fear. It does pretty reasonable basic damage. It's like a quarter of a scoria, about a third of a scoria hit. So it's not bad at all and it does it a few times. And it has a heavy attack that's AoE hits pretty hard. But more importantly, it puts mine and Maim on. Now, originally in the past, we were using one Dormer House, one Bloodspawn. And we were using that to increase our flat stats. And then using a Magic Recovery Glyph. Overall, getting that two-piece is going to outweigh that. You're only losing a bit of stamina and magicka, and in exchange, we're getting a two-piece monster set that's very good. And then we're going to get the stamina recovery on our glyph on our other five-piece set. Now, Necro, if you don't know what it is, when you have a pet active, you get magicka, a lot of magicka. Big thing to know here is that pets scale on your magicka and penetration only. They do not get affected by spell damage. So, more magicka, more fun, basically. Our next five-piece set is the godsend of... ESO, this is my favourite set right now, it's glorious, that is Elegant, Elegant is brilliant, so Elegant gives us spell damage, Magicka, Magicka, already very pet, pet sort for any stats, increase your light and heavy attack damage by 20%, that is just so key to the build, I will explain to you again how that works, but again, check out the previous videos for more detail, but this is really too good to miss, and our glyphs as before are one reduced cost, one recovery, and one stamina recovery. Our glyphs on our weapons then, we have two elegant swords, our Nernhode on the main hand with a weapon damage and spell damage, and sharpened on the off hand with magic and stamina damage. One question I'm sure I'll get is why not use a 2H sword? 2H sword is not going to give us that sharpened, we're not using forward momentum so it's pointless basically. You're going to be better off going for the elegant jeweled because you get that sharpened, it's a bit more damage. Back bar then is once again going to be the Master Ice Staff. That's going to be infused with a Magicka Steel. That's going to benefit Sustain. It gives us more damage and it gives us a Spam Bot. It does everything we want. Again, another question I get every video anyway. Somebody timestamp this when somebody asks, because somebody will ask this. Why an Ice Staff? Why not fire a Lightning? Answer, we do not want to hard CC our opponent. We want to control them. If we hard CC our opponent, our main combo is not possible because Scamp is essential to our burst combo. Uh, we have to have that as our CC because it's delayed. If we don't have a delayed CC, this will not work. Okay. Stats. We are 43.3k Magicka, 23k Health, and a 10.3k Stamina with 2.2k Magic Recovery. Obviously, we've got a reduced cost glyph, and we have 7 Lights. So that's a lot more reduced cost, another 8% on that as well. And then we have 2.2k Spell Damage. 
Nothing too insane on those stats, but you've got to realize how much that overload weighs into this and how well your stats are going to start scaling with those pets. Stam recovery also up enough to deal with is 901. That's why I run that glyph. It just gives us enough to deal with that low stam pool. Not a problem. I've never had a problem and you could even roll dodge once or twice per pot. I know why I said pot. We're not using tripods, but whatever. Per weave. Anyway. Onto our skills. So skills. We are using Ball of Lightning. Again, same principle as not using a Fire or Lightning stuff. We don't want a hard CC. We don't go for Streak. Why give CC immunity here when we need the Scamp for the Burst? So we go for Ball of Lightning. It's also very good defensively. And defense is going to be very key on a Pet Sword. You need to be able to get time to resummon Pets. There are certain scenarios where resummoning a pet is pretty important. Number two is going to be Endless Fury. This is going to give us magic return on a kill. It's a big execute. It just works perfect with this. The amount of burst damage we have. I mean, honestly, on the right target, you could burst up to 60k, 70k even in one millisecond. So Fury is the sweet spot skill here. It's going to give us a great amount of burst extra. It takes down the health to pieces. It's perfect for this. Hard and Ward is our damage shield. Even in the current patch, I think this is better than the other morph of shield. But if you are having problems with your pets dying a lot and you're doing fine surviving, Hard and is not necessarily quite as good as it was last time proportionally to the other shield. It is still better in my opinion, but Empowered Ward is a little bit more viable for pets of this patch. In my opinion, it may be worth it for some people. For me, I think I'm fine for sustain. I like Hardened, but if you are struggling for sustain, etc, etc, Empowered Ward, the other morph of the shield, is actually not as bad these days. Scamp and Pet are going to be our two pets, obviously, and we're going to have this on the other bar as well, and then we're using Energy Overload. That is going to be our main burst skill. I just realized that these cheeky little bastards stole the resource. I was going to get my ulti on. Damn. Do I know where there's a wolf? I do know where there's a wolf. Let's go get a wolf at the same time. On our other bar then, we are running with Daedric Prey. This is going to give us 40% more pet damage. It's also going to add a big boy burst to the combo. It's just perfect, really. It does everything you could possibly want. Um, it's not really missing anything. And then number two is going to be Frost Reach. Frost Reach is going to give us that spam ball. It's going to give us a root. It's going to give us a dot. It just adds into that burst once again. Harness for the shield. You don't really want to go dampen. It is really nice, and especially with how rampant and how strong stamina is at the moment. Harness does have some pretty... Uh, big downsides but if you've got one magic guy on you the highest magic return is a little too good to get away from on sork it's pretty damn hot so i think harness wants to go for it. and pets are toggles so we have to have the pets again well can we get my ulti here there we go my back bar ulti then could be one of three things greater Achenok, that's going to give us great damage against melee based builds that are tanky as hell anything with zahn it's fantastic to use against lock them out of that melee range um, anything that you're struggling to kill with overload, it's a great counter and anything with wings. It's very, very useful. If you're going to play aggressively, that's your best. Now, if you're going to play passively, your next best is the Sigic ulti, Temporal Guards. Temporal Guard gives you minor protection, reducing your damage done by 8%, and it's also pretty useful. If you use that after a few streaks, you go all the way back and you get all that magic back. Great skill, really nice return, and it is good on a Sork. The final morph you could use is if you are lacking sustain, you could use barrier. You're never going to cast it, so any morph is fine. I don't even morph mine. I just put it on the bar. It's just there passively for 10% regen from the Magicka Aid passives. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, food is going to be Clockwork Citrus Fillet. We're going to need that for sustain. And we are using the h -nack. You do not want to be a vampire in this patch. You're going to take too much damage from the fire attacks, especially with the buffs to light attack. It's a bit overwhelming, so don't go that way. Next is going to be the following. We're going to go into our CP. Uh, CP is going to be one in Siphoner. Why one? Because that wants Templars or anyone with add-ons, you've got Siphoner on you. They're going to purge. It is worth the point and we have one point spare that we can't do anything with. It is perfect. It gets rid of those purges. It makes them react even though we would only waste that point anywhere else. 66 Warlord, 11 Sprinter. That's going to CC break and Sprint. Sprint is still useful, even with that low stam sustain. This tree scales so well that the amount of return you get in is well worth the points. And then we've got 56 in Mooncraft, 76 in Arcanist for recovery, and 40 in Tumbling for Roll Dodge. A bit less there this time. 56 in Elf Bomb for our crit damage, 49 Elemental Expert, 50 in Spell Erosion. We're going to come back to that tree. 20 in Pharmatouch for the pets. And here we go. 56 Master Arms for direct damage. And where it gets really frisky is Physical Weapon Expert. Believe it or not, that benefits Overload in the current patch. It didn't used to. It does now. So we're now getting 
another 12% damage on our overload simply by putting points in dual damage. Sounds ridiculous since it's technically physical damage, uh, but it does. It increases your overload and it's big time. 12% more damage is a lot. Very, very noticeable to miss those points. You definitely want them in that tree. Better still, it gives us exactly 75 points for the Butcher Passive, which will also be proper overload, giving us an execute even further with the overload. So that's always glorious, right? Red Tree, 66 in Ironclad, 1 in Resistant. Resilience, a nice passive to reach, but I don't think it's worth it in the case of this build. Whatever. And then 28 Fixed Skin for Dots, 43 Hardy, 37 Element Defender, and 66 Bastion for our shield, 9 Expert Defender. Well worth the points. Light attack here hard. It's not too bad at all. I think I've covered everything. Now, one thing I did see in my Twitch chat, a bit of a silly comment. He says... This build is useless, pets don't work. So pets definitely do work. I'm gonna disclaim this real fast because I see this a lot everywhere. And there's a lot of talk from the class reps that's just totally misdirected by people who don't understand pets. Pets are very good open world. They're difficult to play with. Why? Because you add another thing to your weave. Not only are you light stack ability and looking for what you've got to do to react, you've also got to command your pets. How do we do that? Press escape, go into your controls, go down and you're looking for the control called command pets. Bind that to whatever key is comfortable for me is Y. And then what you want to do is if you want to send a pet something, e.g. this wolf, we click Y and left click. And if you want to send them back, Y and right click. That's how we control the pets. So off they go, off they go. Oh, look, I want to call them back Y and right click. Another key thing here is going to be an add-on called Pet Dismiss. That will allow you to bind an add-on for dismissing your pets. Now, obviously, console doesn't have this. Rest assured, I hope that the representatives on the class will finally realize that consoles should probably get that if they don't randomly yolo buff pets which would be silly for me all that does is bind to key so i can instant dismiss my pets now pets can sometimes be a bit buggy on terrain not too often these days but if they do you're going to want to dismiss them with pet dismiss and then you're going to resummon them online of site no problem apart from that pets don't die very easy at all finally the combo so again very very brief explanation here check the previous videos on how to do this i maybe make a video specific to how to do this combo because it is very different to anything else. Um, combo is as follows. When you're fully shielded, you're going to go for Scamp. Cast Scamp is going to start its pulse. Now, when you see that, you'll see this big explosion. Poof. And poof. Etc. Etc. On the fifth pulse, that is going to stun your opponent in an AoE stun. The reason that is so good is it's delayed. When you cast that, you know the stun is due, but it's not coming instantly. So, what we do is we do as follows. Scamp. Two casts, whatever they may be, shields or our uh, reach. Then we're going to cast Curse. Two more casts, Fury, swap into Overload, and throw Overload. When I say cast, that could be defensive or offensive. It's up to you completely. When you do that, you are going to connect your Overload, your Curse, your Fury, your Twilight Pulse, and the Pulse of your Scamp, and a Light Attack of your Scamp, and potentially Implosion, and of course the Fury proc on the Execute. All of that is going to happen in the same second. And your overload is probably going to hit upwards of 15k. Even on a tanky target, I could do 10k plus. It is an enormous burst. I have yet to find a stalemate with anyone in this build. I can kill any build whatsoever in this class so far. The only thing that's hard is wings. Bam, Atro does the job there. So we can get through that, no problem. Again, if you want more detail, because there is a bit more complexity to that weave, so check out my previous sort videos. There's loads of them out there with this build, especially if you can find the original one, because it is tough. Maybe some angel in the chat who watched this video could even drop a link for my first ever version. If you do, I'll pin the comment for you. Um, I might check it out myself, but we'll see. Anyway. Uh, what else to cover? Final thing? Yeah, true. So, if you don't have a master staff, I did get this question a lot. Blobs, I don't have a master staff. What do I do? You've got two choices. Number one is a master ice staff that's gonna... Sorry. That's already not a choice. You've not got it. Number one is going to be an elegant ice staff infused. That's going to still give you root. It's going to give you the light attack damage. And it's going to give you magic. That's great because we're getting the five piece on the four piece now. And the other option, if you can't afford that, is going to be a willpower ice staff infused, which should be very cheap. So that's your best option after that. Another thing to mention is people are going to say, why don't you use fire staff on the front bar instead of elegant swords? So we've already talked about 2H, but why not fire staff? Your passives do not apply on your overload bar. So we don't get any extra damage from that fire staff on our front bar. It gives us none. Not a single jot of the damage will go to our overload. That's really important. That's a lot of damage. It's about 12% damage you lose to go for Destro. If you really want the light attacks, you can do that. But I assure you, it's not worth doing. So you really should go for the elegant swords. The burst from this build is what gets the kills. It is gigantic. It's worth doing. 
check out my stream for this video. Check out YouTube. Um, and yeah, definitely jump on the stream. I play this one a lot. It's pretty fun. Good luck with the build. I've covered a lot there. If I did forget anything, High Elf is definitely the best race. Yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.